Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Dividing Fractions Part 1. So the good news is that dividing fractions is actually very simple because every single division problem with fractions, we're going to turn it into a fraction multiplication problem. We already know how to multiply fractions, so every division problem will become multiplication of fractions, and so we already know how to do it. What I want to do here, though, is to teach you mechanically how to get the answer to dividing fractions, but more importantly, I want you to understand why we're doing what we're doing. Because what we're gonna end up doing to turn the division into multiplication is we're gonna change it to multiplication, and we're going to flip over the second fraction and then multiply. But a lot of students, even though they can do it, they don't understand why we're doing it. So half of this lesson is going to teach you how to do it. The other half is gonna teach you why we are doing it. So let's jump into a very simple example because simple examples are the best examples. Let's take a look at the fraction one uh, which is really not a fraction, it's a whole number, but it's still you could write it as a fraction. One divided by the fraction one half, right? So you have a whole number divided by one half. So I wanna show you how we're gonna do that, but before we do it, let's line up and see what this actually means. So this means one, this is a one whole, is a square, using square fractions here. And this is one half, all right? So if we're gonna put one half here, we can kind of divide it like this. I guess I could put a little division symbol like this. What is this going to equal in terms of numbers, right? Well, what we're asking ourselves is if we start with one whole object and then we have a half of an object, how many times will this fit into here? And you can see it'll go, there's one time, and then over here will be the second time. So it's actually gonna go two times. So I can kind of write it in picture form. I know that one whole thing divided by one half is going to go two whole times, right? Because this is half as large as this, we can fit two of them in there. Now in pictures, that's what we're doing, but let's teach you how to multi or how to divide these things without actually having to use pictures. You're gonna think, why are we doing that? How is that okay? And then we're going to spend a lot of time talking about why it's okay. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna work up in the top here. I guess I'll scoot this down just a little bit. We're going to say, we're gonna rewrite the one as a fraction, one over one, because every time we divide fractions, we're gonna write think, both things as a fraction and we're gonna divide this by one half. So we have changed nothing here, we just turn this into one over one. Now the way we divide any two fractions, this is a fraction divided by another fraction, is we keep the first fraction the same, but we change this to multiplication. We change division into multiplication, and when we change it, we take the second fraction and flip it over upside down. So this becomes two over one. This is the part where people are like, how can you do that? Just forget about that for now. I promise I'll make it clear, but for now just know you turn all fraction division into multiplication and you take the second fraction and flip it over. Now we know how to multiply. One times two is two and one times one is one. So it's two over one and two over one is two, which is exactly what we got when we did the pictures. We know the answer is, all, is all, uh, already two. All right, so we know how to divide the fractions mechanically, every fraction, division, all you're going to do is change it to multiplication, flip the second fraction over, in this case it was two over one, then multiply and simplify. So I'll say it again because I want you to remember, every time you divide fractions, any time, no matter what fraction you're dividing, or even if it's a mixed number, we'll do it later, any time you divide them, all you do is always change it to multiplication and flip over the second fraction and then multiply. So every fraction division problem will just become multiplication. Every one, no exceptions, right? So it's very easy to do, but people are like, why do we do that? Let me explain why. We're gonna do a couple of examples to show you. All right, what we're basically saying here is that we're taking one whole and we're dividing by one half. But what does this bottom number mean when we have one half? What does the number two at the bottom mean? The number two down here, it means that we take a whole object, we divide it into two pieces, and then we take two, two equal slices, and we take one of them. So notice this is you know one whole object. We take one whole object, the two here means we make two pieces, two equal pieces, but we only retain one of them. So we're gonna put that one away. So the bottom number is really, really important in, in a fraction. It's telling you how many pieces you have of a whole. So if I'm taking one divided by a half and the bottom number is telling me how many equal pieces I have out of one, then when I divide it, of course, if I divide by one half, I had the, the idea of what one half is, is that I have two pieces out of a whole. So if I can divide them, then it has to go two times. So 
The reason why I turn it over and multiply is because the bottom number is telling me how many pieces of a whole I actually, how large are the slices? That's really what the two is telling us. If I take a whole and I have, I'm making a one half, and I make a one half by dividing into two equal slices. But every time I have two equal slices, I know it's gonna go in there two times, all right? So it's gonna go two times and I'm just multiplying uh, by one because I only had one to start with over here, right? So the flipping over, the two goes on the top because when I have a two on the bottom, I'm making two equal slices, and how many times will that go in there? It's, it, it, if you have two equal slices, it has to go two times, so by flipping it over and multiplying, I'm just saying I have two equal slices, and I'm multiplying by the one that I had, so that's only, I have two equal slices times the one, and so it's gonna come out to an answer of two. All right, the, the secret sauce to why we're doing it is because when we divide by a fraction, the denominator of the second fraction, the two, it's telling me that two of these things is gonna fit into there. And if I know that two of them are gonna fit into there, then I'm just gonna multiply by the one whole that I had to begin with, okay? Um, what if we change the problem just a little bit? All right, what if we change the problem just a little bit? Instead of two divided by one half, let's make it two divided by one half. Mechanically, we're gonna do it the same way. We're gonna change all whole numbers to fractions. We're gonna divide by one half again, just like before. The first fraction will stay the same. The division will then become a multiplication and the second fraction will flip over. So now I multiply, just like before. Two times two is four and one times one is one. And then the answer is four because four divided by one is four. So what does this mean? This would mean, I don't have another whole square, but what it was it's telling me is that I would have two holes, two of these squares divided by one half. It would go one time, two time, then on the other one, three times, four times. It goes four times like this. Why do we flip it over is because the bottom number is telling me how many of these things I get out of a hole. I get two of them out of a hole here but I have to multiply by two because I had, in this case, two holes to begin with. So if I have two holes to begin with, and each of these can fit into a hole two times, then two times two is four. That's why I flip and multiply. The flipping over is because the denominator of the other fraction is telling you how many fit into a hole. And you change it to multiplying because whatever I have in the front is how many things I have to begin with. So by multiplying, one, two, three, four, that's what's going to fit in there, and that's the flip and multiply idea. So we're gonna crank through a bunch of these and really get a lot of practice. Let's take a look at a similar problem. One divided by one third. One divided by one third, all right? So we change the whole number to a fraction, right? I'm gonna do a couple of steps at once here. Now we're gonna change the division of multiplication and we're gonna flip this over to three over one, right? So we just flip and multiply. Now we multiply, one times three is three, and one times one is one, and three divided by one is three. So what we're saying is that this goes three uh, times. Does this make sense? Well, this denominator is telling me that this thing, that, that I'm gonna take a whole, I'm gonna cut it into three equal pieces and take one. So we know this thing is three times smaller than a whole. That's another way of looking at it. And so by knowing that three of them is gonna fit in into a whole and multiplying by one, we know that three are gonna fit in there. Let's just see if that makes sense. One divided by uh, one third. This is one third because we have one third, two thirds, three thirds, right? This is one third, two thirds, three thirds. So we're dividing by this, right? So you can see that this is gonna fit one time, two times, three times, which is the answer. And the reason it makes sense to flip and multiply is because this is telling me that three of these, the three down here tells me that three of these fit into a whole because the way I got it was taking a whole and dividing it into three equal pieces. So this three is telling me three of them will fit into a whole, but I multiply by one because I only had one of them to begin with, so it fits three times. It fits three times, I guess I'll just leave that right there. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna put it down here. All right, we have more. The more you see this, the more it will make sense. So we'll do more, one more. Let's take a look at one divided by one fourth. One divided by one fourth, all right? So mechanically, the one becomes a one over one, the division becomes a multiplication, and we flip this over, four over one, and we multiply. One times four is four, one times one is one, and we divide and we get a four. Let's see if this makes sense. What we're basically saying here is if we have one whole object, and then we divide it, 
by something even smaller, which we're calling fourths, right? How many times does it go? One time, two times, three times, four times it fits exactly. Why does it make sense to flip and multiply? It's because the number on the bottom is telling me that four of these rectangles will fit into a hole because the way I got it was taking a hole and cutting it into four slices equally and keeping one of them. So we, it tells me that four of them fit into a hole. So we flip it to put it on top and we multiply by one because we only had one hole to begin with. So multiply. If we had two holes where it was two divided by a fourth, then we would uh, be multiplying by two and we would get eight. Right? So we're going to do more problems like that later. Now, for all of these, it's been one divided by something, two divided by something, one divided by something, one divided by something. I'm just trying to prove to you that every time you do this, you flip and multiply every time. So now let's change it so that the fraction uh, problems are just a little more complex. Let's take a look at one half and we'll divide it by one fourth. Now, mechanically, what do you do? Same process every time. The one half stays the same. The division just turns into a multiplication and then the one fourth becomes four over one. You flip and multiply. Now let's carry it out. One times four is four and two times one is two. And now we divide. Four divided by two is two. And so the answer is two. All right, now let's see if this makes any sense. First of all, one half divided by one fourth. Let's look at it in picture form over here. This is a whole rectangle, this is a half of a rectangle, and then the one-fourth would be cutting it into four equal pieces and only having uh, one of them there, okay? But how many times can a fourth fit in there? It can fit one whole time, and then another one can fit two whole times right there. So we get an answer of two which matches exactly before, right? So when we take one half and divide by one-fourth, two of them can fit in there. That's what I'm really showing you here, and so the answer is two. Now why does the flip and multiply work? Because when I divide by a fourth, what it's telling me is that four of these things will fit into one hole. That's what this, that's what a fourth is. It tells me that four of these rectangles will fit into a hole. But when I flip, so that four is there, but I don't have a hole. It's not multiplied by one, it's multiplied by a half because I didn't start out, I wasn't dividing one by a fourth. In fact, you can look before. The last problem we did was one divided by a fourth. Right? So we flip and multiply and we said, well, four of these guys will fit into a hole and then we multiply by one because we had one to begin with, so the answer was four. But here, we flip and multiply. Four of these will fit into a hole, but I don't have a hole I'm dividing by. I only have a half. So it has to fit half as many times. Two is the answer here as compared to four there. And the only difference is because I was taking one half and dividing by this. And so what I started with was half as big. So flipping is how many fit into a hole, and then when I multiply, I'm just cutting it down by whatever I'm kind of dividing, you know, dividing uh, into. All right, let's take the next problem. Let's take one third and divide it by one ninth. Same process as before, flip and multiply. So the one third stays the same, the division changes in the multiplication, and this becomes nine over one, and now we multiply. 9 times 1 is 9, and 3 times 1 is 3. Then we divide. 9 divided by 3 is 3. It goes 3 whole times. So let's see what this looks like pictorially. 1 third divided by 1 9. Uh, 1 ninth. 1 third divided by 1 ninth. We got an answer of 3. This is a third because there's 3 equal pieces here. And this, one of these little green things is a ninth because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 of them. This is how many times can it fit? Well, 1 ninth can go 1 time. It can go two times, it can go three times, right? So what you're doing here, when you flip and multiply, is you're saying, okay, this is dividing by one ninth. When I flip it, then it's telling me that nine of these things fit into one hole. But I didn't start out dividing into one hole. I only divided into one third. So it would go nine times into a hole, and I multiply by a third because originally, I, this is a hole. This, if I was dividing this into a whole, it would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times. But I didn't divide one divided by that. I divided one third. Uh, one third is what I started with. So it can't go the full nine times. It's only gonna go one third of that amount. So you multiply by a third. This is the amount it will go into a whole. Multiplying by a third is just because I didn't have that much to start with. So I chop it down. And so it can only go three times. Only go three times. All right, let's move along. 
let's say we have one half and we're going to divide it by one eighth. All right, mechanically, without thinking about it, you start with the one half, you multiply because you change that division to multiplication, you flip this over to eight over one. Now multiply, one times eight is eight and two times one is two. Now you divide, eight divided by two is four. So it goes four whole times. Let's see if this makes sense. One half is this, and then one eighth is this small little sliver. It goes one, two, three, four times, which matches my answer before. So why does it make sense to flip and multiply? Because when I flip this, it's telling me that this size, one eighth, it will fit eight whole times into a whole, right? If, if I were dividing one divided by this, then I would have the entire thing divided by an eight that would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It would go eight times. But I'd, I'm, not, I'm not taking one divided by that. I'm taking one half divided by that. So whatever I get, if it goes eight whole times into a whole, I need to cut it in half because I only had half to start with. So I multiply by a half and I, that tells me it goes four whole times. So pictorially, flipping over is really just telling you how many times that fraction will go into a whole. The multiplying comes into play because you have to multiply whatever you had to start with, right? And so I've been trying to show you pictorially what we're doing here. What I'd like to do now is take these down and solve a few more problems with no pictures at all and just get practice with the mechanics. If at the end of the lesson you're still fuzzy on why you're doing it, watch the beginning of this lesson a few times, and I think with more exposure, you'll understand exactly what's going on. All right, next, we're going to be taking the fraction 1 fourth and dividing by 2 thirds, right, 2 thirds. So now that we have the mechanics down, we can just apply it to every problem. The 1 fourth stays the same, division becomes multiplication, take this one, flip it over, to three halves, and then we multiply. One times three is three, and four times two is eight. And so you get an answer of three eighths. So this is an example of a fraction division where it doesn't go a whole number of times. We're taking one fourth, and we're dividing by two thirds, and we get an answer that's not, uh, that's not a whole number because it doesn't go a whole number of times in. So if you ever get a fractional answer when you're dividing fractions, all it means is that what you've divided in cannot go a whole number of times. If the answer you get is a half, it just means that when you divide it in, it can only go, uh, it can't go once, it can only go half of a time, for instance. In this case, we divide it in and it only goes three eighths, which is a little bit less than a half, is all that's basically telling you there. And just to show you what I mean by this, one fourth is represented by this sliver in yellow. And this is one third and two thirds right here. So we're starting out with a very small amount of material and we're dividing uh, by this, which is a much larger. So what we're asking ourselves is, how many times can this thing fit into there? And you can see it cannot even fit one time, right? So that's why we get an answer less than one. And if you line it up exactly, you can see that it, not only can it not go even one time, it goes less than half because less than half of this can fit. Half is right here, right? and only less than half will fit in. So what it's telling you, if you get an answer exactly of one half, it means that exactly half of it would fit in. Um, and if you get in, whatever fractional answer you get is telling you how much of that thing is gonna fit in. Three eighths, four eighths would be exactly one half. Three eighths is a little bit less than a half. So you can see that a little bit less than half of this whole thing is what fits in anyway. So that's what that's basically telling you there. So anytime you see a fractional answer, that fractional answer is just telling you how much of this in a fractional form is actually fitting in there. And that's what division basically is. All right, so let's take a look at one half and we'll divide it by three fourths. So mechanically speaking, what do we do? We take the one half, we leave it alone. We change to multiplication and then we flip at the same time and then we multiply. One times four is four, and two times three is six. Now, four sixths is the answer, but we can always try to simplify fractions. This one, three eighths was already simplified. So what we're going to do is we're gonna take the top, we're gonna to divide by two, the bottom, we're gonna divide by two, and then four divided by two is two, and six divided by two is three. And so the final simplified answer is two thirds, although four sixths is the same thing. It's just a, a, not quite as simple to write down, so we don't like that as much. All right, what about one fourth? And we'll divide that by one eighth. One fourth divided by one eighth. So what do we do? We'd leave the one fourth alone. 
We change to multiplication. We flip the second fraction, 8 over 1. 8 times 1 is 8, and 4 times 1 is 4, and then we divide. 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 2 is exact, and that is the final answer. All right, cranking through. Now we know what we, we're doing. It's actually quite simple. 1 fifth divided by 1 half. All right? What do we do? We leave the 1 fifth alone. We change to multiplication. We flip the second fraction. Multiply. 1 times 2 is 2, and 5 times 1 is 5. We cannot simplify this, so 2 fifths is the answer. So what it means is if I take 1 fifth, which is really small, and I divide by 1 half, which is larger, it cannot even go in there one time. Only 2 fifths of this thing we're dividing by can actually fit in. That's what the answer actually means. That's what the answer actually means. All right, we're on the home stretch. We're way past the halfway mark. Take a look at 1 third divided by 5 ninths. All right, mechanically, what do we do? We leave the 1 third alone, change to multiplication, flip the second fraction, 9 fifths. Multiply. 1 times 9 is 9, 3 times 5, 15. Now, this is the answer, uh, that, or that is a, a, an acceptable you know, form of the answer, but it's not quite simplified enough, so we'll take 9 fifteenths, and we will divide top by 3, bottom by 3, and then 3 to by 3, 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5, so the answer is 3 fifths. And that's the final answer. All right, I want you to pay close attention to this one. What about 4 ninths? We'll divide by uh, 1 third. All right, nothing's really weird, so we just do the same as always. 4 ninths stays the same, change to multiplication, flip the second fraction over, and now we multiply. 4 times 3 is 12, and 9 times 1 is 9. Now notice what we have is an improper fraction. Just like we got as an answer improper here, we divided it and we just got a whole number of 2. Here we have an improper fraction, and it doesn't divide evenly, but we can still convert it to a mixed number. So 9 times 1 is 9. Uh, 9 times 2 is 18. That's too big. So when we divide it, it only goes one whole time. 9 times 1 is 9, and the remainder left over, 12 minus 9 is 3, and it's out of ninths, right? So let's simplify this at 3 ninths as 1 and 3 ninths. We can divide the top by 3 and the bottom by 3, and we get an answer of 1 and 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 9 divided by 3 is 3, 1 and a third. All right, 1 and a third. So you can write it as 1 and a third, or you could write the answer as, uh, as 12 ninths, or you could simplify this down to, this will end up being 4 thirds if you divide both by 3. But 1 and 1 third is probably the best answer. What does it actually mean? It means this number, this is larger than this. If I take this amount of stuff and I divide by a third, it can go one whole time, but it cannot go two times. It can only go one whole time plus another third of this can fit in, and that's it. So when you get an answer of 1 and a third, it just means if it's one whole third, one whole time, and this fractional part just means it can't go two whole times, it goes one whole time plus another third of this thing can actually fit in. All right, we only have two more problems. Stick with me till the end. Almost done. Let's take two, and we'll divide it by three-fifths. Now, we always take whole numbers and write them as fractions. Then we change to multiplication. Then we flip over five-thirds. And then we multiply. Two times five is 10, and one times three is three. So we have an improper fraction. Let's convert. Three times three is nine. That's as close as I'm gonna get, so it goes three whole times. Three times three is nine. 10 minus nine is one, and it's in thirds. So three and a third is the final answer there. So you could write it as 10 thirds or three and a third. What does it mean? If I take two wholes and I divide it by three fifths, it can go one time, two time, three whole times, but it cannot go four times. It doesn't have enough. It can only go three whole times plus another third of this can actually fit in. And that's what the final answer means. All right, last problem. Five halves divided by three eighths. All right, same story. Keep the first fraction, leave it alone, change to multiplication, flip over eight thirds, multiply. Eight times five, 40, and two times three, six. So these are both even numbers. Let's first uh, simplify them, simplify this guy by dividing by two. 
20, uh, 40 divided by 2 is 20, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. It's still an improper fraction. Let's convert to a mixed number. So 3 times 6 is 18, and 3 times 7 is 21. That's too much. So it has to be 3 times 6 is 18. But 20 minus 18 is 2, and it's in terms of thirds. So 6 and 2 thirds is the final answer. Or you could write it as the improper if you want. What does it mean? If I put, you know, rectangles on the board that represented five halves, which would be a large amount of material, notice five halves is bigger than one, way bigger than one, and I divide by a relatively small thing, three eighths, it means it can go six complete times. Not quite seven times, only six times plus another two thirds of this thing I'm dividing by will fit in. So I've really tried to structure this lesson so you get two things out of it. The most important thing is that you understand what you're doing, and right there with it, which is just as important but will come with practice as well, is to understand mechanically how to do it. So in other words, we want to crank through and get the answer and make it second nature, but I also want you to know what you're doing. And when you look at the answer to understand, when you get an answer of six and two thirds, what does it mean? When you get an answer of one half, what does it mean? I've tried to put that together for you. I'd like you to solve every one of these problems yourself. When you feel like you're getting the right answers, follow me on the part two. We'll wrap up our practice of dividing fractions.